Our standard is MBT4 I can add within 100 using concrete models. Our problem is Bob grabbed some beans and placed them in cups. In the first cup, he had 12 beans. In the second cup, he had 17 beans. In the third cup, he had 18 beans. How many beans did Bob have in all? Well, I need to look at the question. What am I going to answer? How many beans did Bob have in all? When I see in all, I know that I am going to add something. Well, let me look back in the problem to see how many beans Bob had. In the first cup, it says that he had 12 beans. I'm going to circle 12 so I can remember to focus on that number. In the second cup, he had 17 beans. I am once again going to circle that number as well. In the third cup, he had 18 beans. This is my third number that I need to circle. So these three numbers let me know that this is how many beans he had in each cup. And if I want to know how many beans Bob had in all, I know that I need to add those numbers because in all gives me a hint that I will be adding. So if I set up my equation, I have 12 plus 17 plus 18 equals, and that will be my sum. That is what we're working on. Well, if I am adding within 100 using concrete models, the concrete model that we're going to use today are base 10 blocks. But in order to know how many base 10 blocks or which base 10 blocks to use, I need to label each of these numbers by their place value. So since this is a two digit number, I am going to label it with my tens, T represents tens, and then my ones, O represents ones. I see that the one is in the tens place, so I am going to make one 10 rod. And I see that my two is in the ones place, so I'm going to make two units. This, these base 10 blocks represent 12. I'm going to do the same thing with 17. This is also a two digit number. So I'm going to label it with tens and ones. I see that my one is in the tens place. So I'm going to represent that with one base 10 rod. And I see that my seven is in the ones place. So I am going to draw seven units. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now I have represented 17 with base 10 blocks. My final add in is 18 and it is also a two digit number. So I'm going to label it with my tens and ones. I see that uh, once again, there's a one in the tens place. So I'm going to draw one base 10 rod. And then there's the eight is in the ones place, so I will draw eight units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, now we're almost done. We have represented each of the numbers using concrete models, which are our base 10 blocks. Now, because I wanted to add them and find out how many he had in all, I'm going to count them. But remember, when we are counting with base 10 blocks, we always count with the tens first. So I want to make sure that I'm counting them correctly. So I want you to watch as I count my tens first, and then I'm going to count on with my units. 10, 20, 30. Now I'm counting on by ones, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. So I see that Bob had 47 beans in all. Okay, next we are going to look at another problem. We are still working on MBT4. I can add within 100 using concrete models. 
In this problem, Tina sorted some crayons. She put 14 crayons in one box, 16 crayons in another box, and eight crayons in the last box. How many crayons did Tina sort in all? So once again, I need to look at the question that it's asking me. How many crayons did Tina sort in all? Once again, I see in all, so I know I'm going to add something. Well, let me look back at the amount of crayons she had. First, she put 14 crayons in a box, so I'm going to circle 14. Then she put 16 crayons in another box, so I will circle 16. And last, she put eight crayons in the last box, and I'm going to circle eight. Well, remember, since I said that I am adding because in all gave me a hint to add, I am going to set up my equation. I am going to write 14 plus 16 plus 8. Okay, so now because I want to add within 100 using concrete models, I want to use base 10 blocks to help me add. In order to do that, remember I need to label each number by the place value. So I see that 14 is a two digit number. So I should label it T for my tens and O for my ones. My one is in the tens place, so I am going to make one base 10 rod. My four is in the ones place, so I'm going to make four units. One, two, three, four. Now let's look at 16. If I want to label 16, I would label it, since it has, since it's a two digit number, I would put the T over the one and the O over the six. Now I want you to think, how many base 10 rods should I use for this number? If you said one, then you're correct. I should have one base 10 rod. And then how many units should I use for this number? If you said six, units, then you're correct because the six is in the ones place. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're at our last number, but look at this. This is a single digit number or a one digit number. So in eight, I don't see any tens in eight. Eight is just in the ones place. So that means that I just need eight units for this number. So I'm going to draw eight units. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. <gasps> Look, I left off my equal sign and I need to put a blank for where my sum is going to be. So now I need to determine how I can find out how many crayons Tina sorted in all. What should I do? That's right, I should count them in all. But remember, I need to start off by counting my 10 rods first. So. If I count by my 10 rods first, I want you to count with me. We have 10, 20. Now we need to count on by ones. Keep counting with me. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38. So Tina sorted 38 crayons in all.